this is the second time this week that I've woke up in the morning and found a nice dead possum out in the driveway. Two days in a row. Nasty stuff. What well, doesn't get any better than this, guys, I'm standing right beside a prized black walnut tree here in Northeast Tennessee. These things right here are hard to come by this size. This is pretty exciting today. I was up here in the woods looking for some timber and trying to look at some areas I've not looked at here on the farm. And I came across a whole good stand of walnut trees. There's, I think, six total that I'm going to harvest up here. And out of the six, this is the biggest one, and we'll take a measurement of it here in just a second. Kind of a short video, I got a lot of questions on how I measure trees out in the forest when you're out doing timber cruising. When you hear about people going out and cruising timber, that's what they're doing. They're going out in the forest and finding timber and taking measurements and looking for the best trees to harvest. And the tool that I like to use when I come out and look for trees is this right here. What it looks like is a glorified yardstick with a lot of numbers on it, but this tool will do a whole lot and it'll really help you when you're out in the woods trying to measure these trees. It's gonna be hard for me to get a good angle here to measure these. I'm on the side of a bank and this walnut is not in a very good place at all. And I'm having a little trouble keeping my footing here as I try to do the video. This is a log scaling stick and it also measures it in the Doyle scale. There's the international scale, all kinds of different scales that people use all around the world. But in Northeast Tennessee, and uh, pretty much the South in general, I think, the Doyle scale is what people use the most. And when I say Doyle scale, that's just, an, uh, just a formula of math that's used to calculate the size of a tree and how many board feet's gonna be in each log. And the way you measure with these things is you stand at the base of the tree and you measure the DBH, which is the diameter breast height. Right here on the average man, I'm about six foot three, so it might be a little bit lower for you, but when you stand up next to it, you're gonna measure about chest height. And when you put this stick against the tree, you want a full arm extension. It says on here, I think, uh, 20, it says on here somewhere, 25 inches. It says to keep the stick about 25 inches away but I found if I hold it with my arms extended, that's about right when I go back and measure the log after it's dropped, I'm usually pretty, pretty uh, accurate on getting the right number of board footage out of the log and getting the diameter correct. So you're gonna hold it right there, arms extended, and I kind of close one eye and just kind of get it gauged on one side over here. So this end on this far side is gonna be the total width of the tree. When you come over here on the other side, I have to turn around here to get a better camera view, let you guys see what I'm doing. But on this side, you got the inches marked. It starts at about 10 inches and goes all the way up to 40 inches. If you got over 40 inch uh, thick tree, then you're in good shape and I wouldn't even worry about measuring it off. So I measured this breast height before I turned the video camera on. I had about 38 inches. So we're looking right at 38 inch diameter on the first log of this tree, which is fantastic for walnut. That's huge, 38 inches. You'll get some nice wide slabs out of that. So then you'll have a scale on the same size you just took your measurement on. You don't want to use this bat size because that's for measuring timber that's already cut down. And you can see there's 16 foot long increments there. I think one through five. One through five. And if you match those up and just go down through here and find the diameter that you just checked, you can tell how many board feet's going to be in 16 foot logs out of the tree. Now if this tree was already on the ground and I had an open face to measure, I would use this side of it in which you just lay it on the diameter and you go down through here again and find your diameter and find your log size, usually in eight foot increments, you can see how many board feet's gonna be whatever size log you have on the ground. So this thing is really handy and it's really fast at measuring. And there's another thing this will do. If you get 66 feet away from the tree, I believe that's how many feet it is. Let me look on the, it's got, a, it's got instructions on here in a cheat sheet so you can't really mess up. But there it is, 66 feet away. So if this was a clear forest and I had enough room to get to it, but if you walk that far away from the tree, you can hold this stick up in front of you, a diameter breast height, and you can tell how many 16 foot logs is gonna be in the tree. So you can take this stick pretty much and measure the entire tree and get a good estimate on how many board feet you're gonna be getting out of that one tree. And this is all you need. You don't need a measuring tape or nothing fancy. 
And uh, these things are on Amazon, that's where I got mine. People call them a Biltmore stick or a log scaling stick. And if Amazon still don't have them, I'm not sure if they do or not. I'll find another supplier that has them and link it down below. But I think they're maybe 30 or $40. But if you're in the business of going here and cutting trees and harvesting timber, you gotta have one of these because it's the fastest way of measuring the diameter. We're gonna go out in the forest with regular measuring tape and try to bend it around the tree. It's gonna look horrible, it's not gonna be accurate and you're gonna look like you don't know what in the world you're doing on top of that. So you wanna have one of these sticks right here. That's what the foresters use, that's what all the pros use, and they're inexpensive and they're easy to use. So, and it's gonna be really accurate for you. And, and in the long run, you go out and look at a tree, somebody's trying to sell you, you can accurately figure out how many board feet's in that tree when you're scaling up your price and giving them an estimate of what you may give for it. So let's take a look at some more of these trees out here. This is a nice stand of walnut timber, like I said at the first of the video. I found six in here total. I'm gonna come back and harvest, but I can't get the tractor up here. We can't get hardly any heavy equipment up here. So I'm gonna to want to bring a winch up here and my log right tools and my four wheeler. And it's gonna take a lot of time to get these out of here, but it's gonna be worth it. Like I said before, with this first walnut tree that we measured is 38 inches diameter breast height. That is a big walnut tree. You'll yield 34 and 36 inch wide slabs out of that. That's some high dollar walnut out here in this forest. And since this is a tight forest, should be a little bit of sapwood, so we should have some really nice heart color in it. And I'm not even talked about the crotch wood yet. When these trees go up, man, they're flaring in every direction. There's going to be multiple crotch logs in there. And uh, that's just a whole other ball game when you talk about getting money out of these trees. So let me take the camera down here in the bottom and we'll take a look at these other walnut trees. And another tree of a species, I've never seen one this size before. It's kind of interesting. There, and there's one tree down here, I have no idea what it is. So maybe by the time this video comes out, I'll have that figured out too. And uh, in case it might have sounded confusing with this stick right here, it might not have been the best explanation of how to use it. But if you put one in your hands and you read both sides, within a minute, you'll be able to use it effectively. It's so simple, there's really nothing to it. So uh, if the explanation was not uh, thorough enough, buy one and you'll be able to teach yourself in just a matter of minutes. This is the same big walnut tree and you can see where it branches out right there. There'll be some fantastic crotch figure in there. We'll probably have 40 inch plus wide crotch slabs out of that. And above it, it branches out again. So, you know, like I said before, walnut and crotch wood is what you want to look for in these trees. Now this is ridiculous. This is a black locust tree. And if you heard about people talking about locusts, they used them for fence posts 100 years ago because they say you can put them in the ground and they'll outlive you. I've only sawed a few of these while I've had my saw mill, but most of the time they're about eight or nine inch diameter. I've never seen one this big before. I mean, going by our scale here, we're looking at 28 inches. That is ridiculous for a locust tree. Although the, toward the top of it, there's a lot of holes and it looks kind of hollow. So it's probably gonna have some bad places in it. But while we're here, cutting these trees down, which will be this winter, we're gonna get this done before springtime, that way we can get out of here before the foliage kits in, it makes it a lot harder. We'll take this locust while we're here, cause if it does have a lot of bad spots and it is hollow, this makes great firewood, burns really hot. Good stuff. Now maybe by the time this video comes out, I know what this tree is. I got a friend of mine that's a forester down in Georgia, and I'll usually email him a picture of a tree if I'm not sure about it. Because uh, Northeast Tennessee's got such a diverse species of timber, it's ridiculous. There's so many different kinds of trees here, and I come across them all the time that I don't know what they are. I mean, I'm no tree expert. I know the general species and how to saw them and how to cut them down. But when it comes to identifying them, you know, there's a lot to learn with these trees. This one here is no exception. I'm not sure what it is. I'm thinking maybe a hatberry or a mulberry, and I'm not sure, and it's got a brother about 10 feet away that's about twice the size of this one. So hopefully it's gonna be something that's good for harvesting that's gonna produce some nice wood that's valuable to people. Cause there's two nice trees here. It's got these real deep valleys in the bark. And since it's winter time, there's no foliage on it. And uh, if you can't really judge by the ground because there's a million different type of leaves on the ground of this forest. So it's really hard to tell by the leaves also cause they're not there, but we'll find out what this is hopefully by the time I put this out. I'm thinking hatberry or mulberry. We'll see. Also got a real nice eastern red cedar tree down here. This one's huge. It's a very big tree, a very nice canopy, and there's no limbs for probably the first 15 feet. So there's gonna be some really nice slabs come out of here or post or whatever I saw out of it. I'm not sure. Depends on how solid it is in the middle. But the diameter 
it's around, turned the right way, uh, about 28 inches on the diameter of this cedar tree. That's a big cedar tree. Now, most red cedar trees aren't this big. It's hard to find them like this, and who knows if it'll be hollow in the middle. That's one of the problems with cedar trees. You'll find one like this, and you'll get all outside and call your friends about it and put it on Instagram about this great tree you found. When you knock it down, you'll be able to put your log stick right up in it because it's hollow right all through the middle. So I'm not gonna get too excited yet over this one. When we cut it down, then we'll either have a victory party or a salt fest, one of the two. Here's another common species around here that we'll get while we're here. This is a tulip poplar tree. And it's not really a lot of money when it comes to slabs or furniture. It's more of a filler. Cadmet parts are made out of it and a lot of building materials. And it's classified as hardwood, but it's kind of soft. It's real easy to saw. I enjoy sawing this stuff. The sawmill just cuts right through it. There'll be some good valuable stuff in here, whether you want to cut four by fours, eight by eights, or just regular siding out of it. And it's worth getting while we're here. It's a nice straight tree. And it's really big. That diameter about 32 inches there. That's gonna be a good sized tree. And these poplars grow tall and very straight, and their canopies are really high up most of the time, so you get some really clear lumber out of them. Tulip poplar. And uh, some people peel the bark off these things, uh, run through a kiln, and use them for uh, siding and stuff on houses. That stuff's expensive too. I've seen people doing that. I've never had any experiences with it though. So let's carry on. Like I said at the first of the video, this is just a fantastic stand of walnut trees. There's the big one we looked at at first, and there's about five more this size. And uh, they're all really close together here, be easy to get to. And there's an old logging path here, or some kind of trail that was cut in here years ago. And I should be able to get my four wheeler right down in here with the logging arch and get these out of here. But. This one here, shown to be about 20 inches diameter breast tight. A good log right there, good walnut. And this is a real tight forest. There's trees and saplings growing everywhere and that's what you want because there's gonna be really high quality lumber out of these trees because most of the limbs and your defects are gonna be pretty high up where the canopies are. And down below, it's gonna be pretty clear and straight. So, good stuff. Well, I was on my way out of here and I found one more walnut. It's not as big as the first one, but it's a nice one though. Well, this is gonna be kind of a short video. And like I said at the first of it, this is a response to a lot of questions and emails I got about this log measuring stick. And like I said before, I'll find a good source to buy them at, and I'll put it down below in the video description if you want to pick one up. And I've not got a whole lot done this week. I had a lot of good plans this week, but other than today, we've had rain every day. We had a half inch yesterday, and I think tomorrow and Saturday we're supposed to get another inch. So it's really going to put a damper in my plans at the mill, because I got some walnut and some white oak to finish up, and I've not even got to it yet. So hopefully by Monday, I'll be back to the sawmill getting to that. And if you're wondering about these trees here, we're gonna get them this winter before spring comes. But before I get up here and start cutting them, I got four nice cherry trees to take down over by the lake about 20 minutes from here. And at the end of this video, I'll kind of put up some pictures showing you guys some really big cherry trees. They are massive. And I'll video that process taking them down. So on the way out, I'm gonna look at this big white oak tree I forgot to show with the first of. There's a big white oak up here. It's 40 plus inch diameter. It's uh, way too big for this stick to measure, but it's a really nice white oak tree. And uh, I don't know if I'll take it down or not. I've talked to the landowner about it. People kind of hold on to those white oaks around here, but it's a really good looking tree. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. And if you got any questions, let me know below. And uh, got a lot going on here in the next few weeks. I'm gonna try to get some more t-shirts in. I got some of those last fall and, and I sold out of them. And I'm gonna try to start working on getting some more of those in. There's a lot of you guys been asking about them. On the line, we go our way in the
自泪